Hi, happy Wednesday, my peaceful and profitable entrepreneurs. It is Wednesday. It is a gorgeous day. I'm in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Um, it is cold, but the sun is shining, and um, that's what's important to me. <laughs> I can deal with the cold as long as the sun's shining. I love the sunshine. Um, how's everybody doing today? Have you recovered from the time change? Because I think today I'm just now starting to recover. Of course, my kids are not. They are going to be on the struggle bus for like two weeks with this, but um, I'm feeling better. Sunday, I got up at six o'clock, which felt like five o'clock. So that day, um, I felt like hungover, even though I was not at all, but my body was just like not right. So I think I'm finally on the upswing now. So if you're here, let me know. Do you like the time change? Do you like spring forward or fall back better? Like, I'm always so curious because I feel like people have different opinions. So um, be sure to drop me and let me know. Um, but today we're talking about two secrets you can steal to sell more. I just had to check my title because I wrote this like weeks ago. But two secrets you can steal to sell more. So if you hop on, um, please say hello, ask questions, drop your comments. Um, that's what I'm here for. I love getting the interaction. Um, I love the just engagement. It's fun for me. Um, and that's why I'm here is for you. So, you know, if you leave any kind of interaction or emoji, you'll be entered to win my masterclass. It's 90 minutes, four ways to grow your business. It is very robust. I sell it on my website. This is for product-based or service-based businesses. And I just know there's literally a million places you could be right now, especially in the online space. So I like to give that away to someone who joins. And if you catch the replay, um, you're always entered to win for that too, because um, I know we have a lot of people who view the replay. So, um, you know, I wanna make sure you get your questions answered and just treat it like you're on the live stream. And, you know, if you have questions or comments, we'll get back to them after, because I know not everyone can get to 12 o'clock on Wednesday. So we will jump in. I think that's all the housekeeping stuff. Um, let me look at the calendar now, I was thinking. Not next week, but the next week we have the master class. So I'll talk about that later, not today. Um, so what we're talking about today are the two secrets to sell more. And I say secrets, but on in the online space, there's basically like no secrets. Like there's tons of information out there, but these are just two things that I really don't feel like people talk about a lot or um, maybe they know it, but they don't really think about it. Um, so we're going to dive into those, but you know, the, thing I think about with this and the two, you know, secrets to sell more, we kind of have two ways of thinking about that. Like I mean it from the title is like literally how can you go out and sell more? And then that is what is going to result in you selling more. So it's kind of that like process and outcome goal. Um, so the process and like, if you were, you know, here with me in January for the strategic planning party, we talked about like, um, process goals versus outcome goals. So the outcome goals are, you know, you want three clients or you want to make $5,000 a month or, you know, whatever that outcome is. And those are great to have and beautiful, but we don't have a ton of control over those. Um, you know, that it's, we like to think we do, but we really don't. So the process goals are what we have control over. And that is what results in the outcome goals. So, you know, when we're talking today, we're going to review a couple hacks that I like to think about, and those are really process goals. So those are what you can control, um, things that you can set up in your business to do consistently so that you know you can set yourself up for the outcome goal. So that's really how I like to think of these two um, secrets as just really being part of the process to get you the result that you want. Um, I know we have some people hopping on, so be sure to ask questions, drop a comment, um, whatever you want today, because I want to be here for you. So first we're gonna talk about kind of the mindset around selling. Um, selling is a non-negotiable. If you are a business owner, this may be good news, it may be bad news, I don't know. Um, but selling is just a non-negotiable. It is a must if you are going to stay in business. You have to sell your services. Um, you have to put yourself out there. That is one of the differences I see with, like I know a lot of CPAs um, or accountants or just people that do kind of the same skills that I have, but they work for another company or they do it for someone else because they just um, do not want to put themselves out there. They like kind of being under the umbrella of that company and they like kind of that, like I show up and I do my job type of thing. And, you know, it's not really on my shoulders to like bring in the work. And so if you are a business owner and entrepreneur, it is on your shoulders. Like it is me out there selling. Like, and so I, 
kind of struggled at first for a little while because like I make more than a lot of those people working for companies that do that, that work in businesses like that. And what I kind of had to work through is that like part of me making more is that I'm willing to put myself out there. I'm willing to, you know, risk it and, you know, have conversations that they don't have to have um, and speak in a way that they don't have to have. So just normalizing that in business that like you're a business and we need to sell. Um, my Aunt Mary Lou, who since passed away, but when I started my business seven years ago, I remember her saying, tell everyone you know about your business. And, um, you know, it was just so interesting because she had been a big business lady in Boston. She was one of the first um, female vice presidents for Merrill Lynch. Like she just had this amazing career. Then she went and worked in California. And I don't know what Silicon Valley was like back then, but she was I always say she was a big business person. Like she was really high up there with these big companies. Um, and then when she got to like age 60, she moved to Tennessee and um, got a farm. So she started raising llamas and that was a business. Like she, I forget the name of it, but it was, you know, she had t-shirts and she made um, wool and, you know, stuff out of the llama's hair or fur. I don't know what it's called, but um, I remember her at that point, you know, she was a small business and she was like, you just have to tell everyone that you own a business, that you are a business owner, like the lady at the grocery store, like no matter who you meet, like tell them. And so I always remember her words with that because that is just, it was such great advice then and it's such great advice now. Like no matter where you are in business, like this can apply to you. So just thinking about selling is just literally a non-negotiable. Um, I have clients who hire me when they are just starting out. They don't have any clients. They haven't opened their doors yet sometimes. like. Sometimes they're literally trying to get their first three clients and they hire me to help them with that. And I have clients who have been in business for 14 years and are multi seven figure businesses. And they hire me because they're still in some shape or fashion working on the same things. Like, yes, maybe they grew, maybe it happened fast and they didn't really have to do anything. Maybe they're losing some big clients. And so now they actually have to set up a process for selling. Like wherever they are, like this is just something across the board that clients um, that I'm always supporting them with is selling. Um, so that's why I look, love talking about it. And we're gonna have some master classes coming up in April and May that I'm really excited about that are really also about selling and being really strategic about that. So as we move through, I know we have people jumping on. Y'all are really quiet, but let me know if you have questions because um, I want this to be super supportive to you because um, selling can be really, triggering, it can be hard, it can feel scary. Um, so, you know, I really want to make sure that it feels good. So, you know, I have a couple examples. Um, there was one client that we worked together and she started selling regularly and she went from $70 a month in invoices to $2,000 a month in invoices. Like it was pretty significant and what she was doing is what we're going to talk about today. Um, and it wasn't a huge, like jump for her like the income was a huge jump but as far as like the strategic piece and the implementing piece like it wasn't like this huge deal like it kind of was easy and happened naturally so that to me is like a really big win um and then the other one is a free call that i had with someone and we really talked about owning her work and sharing it and selling it um and she went and booked two clients after our call together so i know that this works and i know that it's so important um, and it's just so overlooked with a lot of business owners so um, we'll go ahead and dive in can you all see me okay i had to turn the light on um but you know we just forget how powerful selling actually is um, we get caught in our head about maybe what we should be doing or maybe that selling feels sleazy or, you know, maybe we're just like worried about what people will think. But, you know, literally this is like part of being a business owner. And, you know, what I always think about is if selling feels sleazy, like getting really clear on why it feels sleazy um, and making sure that like, okay, you're selling to someone who raised their hand. Because when I think of selling being sleazy, it's when someone like, I didn't raise my hand like someone's just DMing me in my thing you know I didn't start following them I didn't like their posts I don't know who they are and they're DMing me with like hey your Instagram profile looks like crap and we can help you make it look better or, you don't have many followers and we're gonna help you get more followers or some kind of like you know email that's like hey I looked at your website and you need to change this this and this like to me that's where selling is sleazy is when someone didn't raise their hand and it's just like don't know who you are I don't know how you got my information but like that is gross to me so 
that's where I really want to think about like if someone raised their hand, um, if someone started following you or they're, you know, joining their, your group or they're liking your stuff, like to me, that is like an indication that they, um, appreciate what you do and they like it and you're kind of like on the same page. And so that's where I think it's not sleazy because it's like, yeah, they're, they're an empowered human and they are following me or they're, you know, reaching out to me. And so that's the frame I want you to think about with um, feeling sleazy. So, you know, just kind of a side tangent there that is kind of more mindset based. Um, but I think the mindset piece of selling is just so important and something that we don't really like talk about or address enough. And so that's what I like to start with and get clear on. I need a sip of water. So if you have anything with a mindset piece that comes up, let me know. Um, I really want this to feel good and I want this to like, use you be able to use these things and if your mindset is not on board um it's going to be really hard to go out and use these pieces so we'll jump in with the strategy pieces now so these are the two secrets i was talking about and like i said like there's no real online secrets out there but um people don't really talk about this and so the one thing i want to start with is kind of comparing it to my morning workout um and that is like you know use my way of getting up and working out and comparing it to sales so this might be really annoying to hear but like i love getting up in the morning and working out like ever since i was in college like i remember being like the first person up in the dorm on the my hall like i was go to like if my roommate was around i'd go to the tv in the shared living room and put on um denise austin and do the workouts at like six o'clock in the morning then um that was just like the way I'd love to start my day. And that's how I still do that. I mean, I have to get up earlier now because of the kids and everything, but that's like my time and I love it. And I literally do it every day. Like I, it sounds crazy. And on the weekend, obviously it's a little different and maybe I'll go for a walk and go see the sunrise and, you know, do something that's not necessarily like I'm working out and pushing really hard every single day, but like getting up and moving my body first thing in the morning when the house is quiet is like a non-negotiable for me. Like and I realized that that's such a different way of thinking about it. Like my husband has a hard time getting up and working out. And he was like, yeah, I just, you know, think about like, oh, I don't feel like it. The covers are so warm. Hi, Tatiana. Same here. A morning workout sets you up for a good day. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm glad we're, we're on the same page here. I'm glad you're not like eye rolling me right now. Um, but my husband is like, it just, I, I just think about staying under the covers and how comfortable I am. And I'm like, I literally don't think about it like it doesn't occur to me like do I want to get up it's just turn off the alarm and get up like that is the action um, whereas if I were asking myself do I want to get up today do I feel like it like and obviously if I'm sick or you know just something is going on with my body then I'm gonna have that conversation but if it's just like a regular day then it's not like oh do I feel like doing a workout like and that's how I want to equate selling um, it's not a matter of like, if I'm going to sell or do I feel like selling or maybe I should sell this week. Like that is not the stance I want you to take. It's not a matter of if, it's when. And so taking that decision fatigue out, and this is something I really work on with people, like especially in the free consistent calls, um, consistent content for consistent five figure months calls is like taking the decision fatigue out of it. Like not if I'm gonna sell, but when, where, you know, how am I going to repurpose it, all that stuff. Um, so when we think about like, we're just going to do it. So apply that to your business. Just do the dang thing. Maybe start small. Maybe it's just, um, you know, like with a workout. Maybe if you're just like, I'm just going to get up, I'm going to do a 10 minute workout and then whatever goes from there. Like, and then usually people want to keep working out and so they keep doing it. But just starting is like the hard part. So that's what I really want to invite you to do with um, selling. And so not thinking about like, if I should do this, when, um, taking all of that question out um, and really just like making it that like, it's not a question, like it's just baked into what I do. Um, really using that, I'm looking at my nose, um, you know, using that and going for it. So it might be like the equivalent of a 10 minute workout might just be like, okay, twice a week I'm going to sell in my stories um, or you know I'm going to reach out to someone you know once a week and do this um, just even something as simple as that or twice a week I do a reel that 
promotes my offer, like whatever that looks like, like, and that is something if you are like confused about where to start, like I'll put a link below to book the call because people literally like create action steps on this call with me and we get really clear about like what works for them because that's another thing is, you know, when I get up and work out in the morning, I'm not doing like high intensity hit trainings. Like I'm not doing the heavy weights. Like that's just kind of a hard no for me. I'm doing more like bar blend type of stuff and something that suits me. And so when you think about selling, like really do something that suits you and works naturally for you. So if you're just kind of like, I hate TikTok, like I don't want to get on TikTok, then like don't get on TikTok. Um, you know, or like I'm doing these live streams, I've been doing them for a year now at least. Um, and I'm nervous every time, but like I love doing them. So it's kind of like a stretch for me, but I still do it and I still enjoy it. And so finding like your way of doing it. Um, for me with my Instagram stories, I do kind of like daily chats three times a week and I record them all at once. I'm wearing the same shirt, doing it like wearing whatever I am and I have like a two re recording max. Like I'll do it twice and if it's not perfect in those two times, I'll pick the better one and go with it because like I'm not spending all day doing those. Um, good is good enough. So just start thinking of it that way. It's like it doesn't have to be um, oh, now I have to really change my whole day around like getting dressed up for this and putting on something fancy. Like for this live stream, I literally like changed my shirt, um, which was, I'm proud of myself for that. But like, you know, with my daily stories or if you see my reels, like it is me like walking the dog and I'm recording something. Like it's not like I'm doing something crazy. Um, and just thinking about how you can use like what is, you know, trending. So like Instagram is really pushing, um, reels and they have been pushing reels, but it's not like you have to get on reels and like dance and point and do something funny. Like if that feels good to you, go for it. But really like think about reels as a way to showcase you and your authentic self and how you authentically work and communicate and use that instead of trying to do what everyone else is doing. So um, sometimes we use trending audio when I have like a thing to use um, or you know, like a non-talking reel but literally it's usually just me talking. And if you look at like my insights, like they're not anything crazy. They're not like blowing up. I'm not like hacking the algorithm or getting like a million followers, but like I make really good money and I'm almost fully booked. So I figure I'm doing something right. So just use that as permission that it's like, well, you don't have to go out and get like a million followers or blow up and have it go viral. Like that's not what we're trying to do. Like if you're here, you're probably, you know, service-based, heart-centered, like you probably don't have just unlimited capacity to serve your clients. So just think about like the people that you need to get in front of and maybe it is just a few. Maybe you can only handle a few clients at once and that's fine. So it's not like the goal of, you know, showing up and selling needs to be this huge reach or like hitting it big. Um, it may just be getting in front of a few of the right people. So think about like, what is that non-negotiable thing that's for you that like feels really good that is like you know natural for you um like facebook groups are another example like i love facebook groups i would love to go network in real life but it's just not really conducive to my life like i saw um one that was in charleston but it was like on james or john's island at like five to seven and i'm like i just can't do that like it is so far from my house it's in the evening, like I would have to figure out something for my husband to come home early and then I have to drive all the way over there and it's this whole like, that just doesn't suit my life right now. So like Facebook groups is a great alternative for me because I'm still kind of doing that like in-person networking, like connections, but it's not like this huge lift where I have to like totally, you know, rearrange my day and, um, you know, get my husband to stop working because he always works till at least like six. Um, so it's not like this whole thing, like, well, can you come home at this time? Cause I need to leave then. Like it just fits into my day and it fits into my life. And so that's what I really invite you to think about. And again, like you can book a call with me and we can get clear on what works for you because there's so many platforms out there. There's, you know, LinkedIn. I don't know if clubhouse is still a thing, but, um, thinking about like, what feels good to you like maybe you can just show up on stories like multiple times a day and that'd be it like 
or maybe you do like to have some reels with some trending audio like how can you bake that into what you're already doing um, which kind of leads into the secret number two um, is stack selling on top of something that you're already doing so um, like I was talking about with the Facebook group so if you are showing up in Facebook groups go ahead and sell um, if you are posting in there go ahead and you know read some other comments and you know refer like people are always looking for recommendations for stuff so go ahead and refer people to other people um, and then you know make sure you're commenting on people and like hey I offer this I see you're looking for this this is like something I love to help people with you know like comment on their post like if you're already getting in there and you're already posting in the group go through and see like what connections you can make um, and then that's the same thing with like Instagram um, you know, I was thinking about like, okay, if people commented on my post, like, should I follow up with them? Like, if I had a problem and they were like, yes, oh my gosh, that is something I struggle with. Like, can I follow up with them, you know, separately because they posted on it? Um, I also have kind of a welcome message, like on Instagram and in the Facebook group. Like, anytime anyone follows me, I'm like, hi, thank you for following me. Like, I'm so grateful you're here. And here's a link to my free call because it's just kind of this natural, like, you're going to get so much value out of following me thing and let me tell you about my free call either for you or maybe someone you know. Um, so that's an example of just like if you're showing up on social media, think about how you can just go ahead and add selling to it. So I don't know if anyone has any questions like logistically or if y'all want more examples. Um, let me know. Um, another thing to think about with social media is like Instagram with the stories. So um, what I typically do or, you know, what my clients have seen work really well is when they have like a story that gets a lot of attention, maybe it's something more personal or maybe a behind the scenes or just something that like, hey, a lot of people are viewing this, a lot of people are liking it, you can sell on the back end of that. So that's just one of those things that like, okay, Instagram or maybe it's Facebook, but I'm just thinking like Instagram stories in particular, you know, like this is getting a lot of attention. This is like telling the algorithm that people like it. So it's probably showing it to more people. Um, and you can sell on the back end of that. And it can be something very simple. It can just be like a, you know, a small video or even like a Canva pic with a link or something. Um, because that kind of is like riding the coattails of that more popular story. And so you can kind of just tag that on the back end. Like, okay, a bunch of people are viewing this. I posted my cute dog, right? you know, did like a fun facial and posted behind the scenes of that or whatever. Like, you know, if that is getting a lot of traction and, you know, eyeballs, like go ahead and just sell on the back end of that because it's already working for you. Um, so just put it there. Um, so let's see. Another thing I was thinking of is like when you're doing the services you offer, and I think a lot of people are really good at this. Um, and then some people like me who sit at a desk all day, like I'm not so good at this. So, um, I know this is something I do sometimes, but I don't do it as much. Um, but it's just when you're doing something like literally recording, like, you know, behind the scenes, um, or letting them know, like, you know, Hey, I'm about to jump on a free call. Like I try to do that sometimes, or when I'm jumping on a client call, um, or when I'm just working in QuickBooks, like, you know, have those behind the scenes things, like you're already doing this thing. So why don't you make that part of your sales post is like, here I am doing the thing that can help you. Um, and even I had a client who was talking about like, she's not really marketing her company yet. So she has a couple different revenue streams and one is she's building it, but she's not really the place where like she has a website that she's sending people to. Um, but she knows that she will one day and she's doing all this great work with clients right now. So we were talking about like, yeah, go ahead and take videos, go ahead and take pictures you know, things that could be potentially reels or stories or just any kind of collateral, like go ahead and do it now, put it in a Google folder um, and save it for later for when you are ready to do it. Um, you know, just thinking of like stuff down the road, like, okay, maybe I'm not gonna do this behind the scenes now and post it now, but I've still got as collateral for when I wanna use it. Um, take another sip of water. So that's just something to think about is like, you know, what do you do in your everyday life or not even your everyday life, but your business? Um, how can you share that? How can you capture that? And then just go ahead and make that part of your sale selling. <laughs> um, and that's another thing too, that I was thinking of is the tips you give your clients. I'm looking at my notes. I'm 
acting like somebody called it out there, but tips you give your clients. Um, you know, that's literally something that like when I'm doing my calls with clients, when I'm doing my one-to-one -one meetings, um, even with some of the bookkeeping stuff that we do or some of my free calls, it's literally kind of like content that I'll think about like, oh, you know, this is something that other people could use or this is something that other people are, you know, struggling with or need support with. So that's where I'll like kind of save that and, you know, share it as like a promo post later. Like just so, you know, when you are selling, you are wanting to use the language that, you know, your audience is using. You want to be in their head. You want to, you know, kind of use those specific words, um, not in like a, you know, gross, sleazy way, but just in a like, I hear you, I see you type of way. And so when you are doing your work with your clients and supporting them, that's just such a beautiful place to be able to be like, I know exactly what you're dealing with, like, because you are supporting someone in that. And so using that, you know, as part of your selling and your sales post and like baking it into what you do is just so helpful. Um, so let me know if those are pretty much the two things. Um, it's kind of all I have today. This is like a short one. Um, you know, I usually go through mindset, strategy, organize, implement. I feel like with these today, we kind of talked about the organize and implement piece with this. Um, again, you know, if you wanted to think about organizing, like we use Google Docs in my practice. Um, so we have like a folder and I've got like real videos there. And then I've got like promo posts on Word, Word documents. Um, so it's all very organized so that it is like inventory for me. Um, I'm a service provider, so that's very much an asset for me. And I don't want to keep creating new content over and over and over for the rest of my life, forever and ever, amen. Like we get to use this as collateral later on. Like this gets to work for us over and over and we get to repurpose it in other places. So we have a very um, great system for how we organize it and what is going where and making sure like nothing gets just used once. Um, so that's like the organized piece of this. And also with the selling piece and baking it into your day, you know, something I always challenge, lovingly challenge my one-to-one -one clients to do is to take a sales action every day. Um, so for you, you know, think about in your business what a sales action would do, would be. Um, and if you want to throw your business out here or we can ideate together, let me know. But what I see people do, um, and again, this kind of comes from like some of the free calls that I do and some of my clients to a certain extent, but what they're doing is like, okay, I'm redoing the wording on my website. So that's a sales action. Um, or I am, you know, redoing the sales post for the third time, or I am redoing, you know, my scheduling software and how that works or what it looks like. And, you know, to a certain extent, it's true that when people are booking, they are coming in contact with that stuff, but it's not a true sales activity. So that's something that our brain, like, can really trick us with is like thinking that like redoing the website for the fifth time or you know I don't know redoing the email se sequence you know again is like a sales activity but it's really not so to me a sales activity is like making a connection with a, another human being so thinking about how can you do that daily and that's going to be the challenge that I'm going to leave you with today um, how can you do a sales activity every day? And so that might be looking like going in Facebook groups. It might look like showing up on Instagram stories or doing a reel or doing a post. Um, it might be sending an email to people, sending a text message to people that you know. Um, you know, one thing I like to do is like make sure, you know, kind of the conversation we had at the beginning was like, let everyone know you have a business. So like literally reach out to people in your contacts, like people that you know, like, hey, I have a business. This is who I help. If you know anyone, I would love for you to pass along this link. Something as simple as that. Um, let's see what Tatiana has to say. Great advice. It's not easy to get over the weirdness of selling on social media at first. That is so true. Um, once you get more comfortable with it, though, and it becomes more natural, you can really see the impact. Thanks, Jordan. Thank you, Tatiana. Yeah, and that's something... You know, I've been in the online space, I've been an online business for seven years, but it was literally like year five that I realized I was in an online business, like I was under a rock and that was so helpful in so many ways. And I had a ton of mindset stuff come up, especially being an accountant. Um, and with my background, we were taught not to sell. We were taught if you're good at what you do, 
then the work just comes to you and referrals come to you. And to an extent that's true, but that was also like 20 years ago that I was told that, like way before the internet, way before online business was a thing. So like it didn't apply now. And like I could even go online and look at these companies that told me that and I'm sure they are selling online. Like I haven't looked, but like I'm sure they have a Facebook page. I'm sure they have like content going out. Like that's just like it messed me up for so long. So Tatiana, thank you so much for bringing that up because that is something that like it is weird. And like let's just say that it is because that it's weird. Like you know, maybe for my kids, it's just going to be this like of course. What what else would you do type of thing? But um, for those of us that grew up with like. Or me, I'm calling myself out, Tatiana, you might be younger than me, but like we had phone books, you know, and like we had to like look up a number in the phone book and that was how like you found a business um, type of thing. So it is weird and it gets to be kind of this beautiful natural extension of our business and just I feel like I've kind of baked it into my everyday activities and like it feels so natural now and I used to have so much stuff get kicked up like am I selling too much? Is that too salesy? And it's like you kind of literally can't be too salesy. Like, as long as you're doing that even exchange of energy of, you know, providing value and showing up and, you know, giving value to your people, like, it is totally fine to sell on the back end of that. And, you know, doing it in a way that, like, tells them that you solve the problem that they have. And so that's why I think, you know, baking all of this into your strategy and not seeing selling as something that's, like, so out there and such a stretch and it's just literally part of living and breathing as a business owner like um you know before the comment i was kind of talking about like looking in your phone and looking at contacts that you have and maybe the people in your phone would not be a customer but maybe they know someone that would be so just letting them know like hey i have a business like do you have anyone that has this problem you know like and it can feel really weird and like Ugh, are they gonna like block me or something but it's like they're empowered adult and you're literally just like hey how are you doing I want to tell you about this thing um, and from what I know to be true is most people that are your friends are your contacts like they are so happy for you to have a business and they're so happy that you're going for it and like living your dream that like of course they don't think it's like gross and disgusting you know just like literally I have a business um, you know like when we drive down the road and we see like a billboard we're not like darn you coca-cola for having another billboard like it literally doesn't occur to us to do that and so that's something we just have to get used to in the online space like tooting our own horn showing our magic and like speaking to the problem that we solve because um no one's gonna do it for us and that's just something that it's kind of like a hard truth but it gets to feel really good like i love doing the free calls um, which is a great segue, you know, I love doing my free calls, um, consistent content for consistent five figure months calls because this is something I'm so passionate about because like I said, the first five years of my business, I didn't show up online. I didn't sell to anyone. Um, you know, I had a few CPAs that referred work to me and I was on the pro advisor site, but it was really not until I started showing up online and giving value and letting people see like what I do and how I can support them and talking about it that like, business A blew up and I get more clients that are just the right fit because some of those clients from the pro advisor or the referrals from the pro advisor or from the CPAs, they were literally looking for like the Walmart of bookkeepers. They were looking for like the cheapest person, the lowest hourly rate. And it's like when they'd ask me my hourly rate, I'd be like, I don't have one. I do agreed upon services. You know, it was this whole conversation. And so creating online content and putting myself out there, like really decrease that so much like I don't get people that are just looking for the Walmart of bookkeepers occasionally yes um, but it really kind of weeds out those people and so that's why I love offering these calls and I'll put the link below um, because we can get really clear on what consistent is for you it doesn't have to be every day like me that's just what I've grown and built to in my business and I get to, get to stack stuff on top of what I'm already doing but really these calls are like figuring out a plan that works for you um, and what is consistent, what do you like, what feels natural, what feels like a good place to show up with your people and make, you know, creating content easy and, you know, make it work for you over and over again. So I'll put the link below. Um, I think we have some calls starting next week. We're booked for this week, but um, I literally like love doing these calls because it's just, it's such a fun like a puzzle for me kind of to solve with people and figure out like what some great action steps are within and people just get really great value. So 
all that to say, um, showing up online and selling can feel good. It can feel like a natural thing and it can totally blow up your business. Um, so I think that's all I've got today, but um, we'll be back next week. So um, if you have any more comments or questions, please drop them below. And thank you all again. Thank you so much for um, showing up. Oh, thanks. I appreciate the thumbs up. <laughs> I always love doing these, but it's so nice when people are on and um, giving feedback. It's just extra fun. So um, appreciate y'all being here, but um, have a great rest of your week and I'll see you later. Bye.